It's funny, I don't think too many people know this, but I committed to Southern Illinois first. And I gave them an oral commitment. And at the time, Coach Weber was there. And there were some kind of rumblings about whether he was leaving, whether he was staying. And uh, Coach Painter did a lot of the recruiting for, for me. And I got along with him really well. I really liked him. But when we heard that, there's, it's always up in the air. You never know what's going to happen. And you know, especially at the, at the mid-major level, there's so much turnover, so much uh, cycle in that respect. So there was something there that, you know, a little unsure. I, I, I wasn't sure if they were going to hire somebody on staff or they're going to bring someone else in. So when I had the chance to go down and uh, talk to Coach Henson and just be in Springfield in general, uh, I, I can't speak highly enough about the people there, the the coaching staff, the people in the athletic department. Uh, I just went back and played in their golf tournament this year uh, for the first time. Coach had never let me play in college, so I was always <laughs> upset about that. But um, the one thing my dad told me, and it was the best advice that I've ever gotten for my college experience, was if basketball's not going well, will you still be happy? And there were times where it, wasn't, it didn't go well. You know, I went through some, some ups and downs, and I was. The city itself, the people, um, it, was, it was the best decision that I made for sure. Same thing. In the summer, I was 1,000 shots a day. And Hammond Student Center at the time was a student center. So there was always volleyball, cheerleading, um, basketball camps going on. So I had to make the sacrifice of getting up at 5.30 in the morning to shoot or wait until 11.30 at night over the summer in order to get gym time. Sometimes I'd sneak in during lunch and have to take down volleyball poles and do all that as quickly as I could. And I had a, a manager named Rich Kemper who helped me out a lot with that, let me in the gym. Um, but for me, that's the only way that I could be successful. I just had to outwork everybody and I knew that. I knew if I didn't put in the work, then um, I wouldn't be successful. And ever since I've been in fourth grade, I've recorded every shot that I've taken on my own. So if you wanted to go back to 2001 on August 12th, I could tell you exactly how many free throws, how many twos, how many threes, and the percentages. And some people called me a dork, you know, I was corny, and I, I wish I would have put that type of work in my school sometimes, but uh, uh, it just, it, it forced me to do something with a purpose. A lot of kids say, you know, they went to the gym for four hours, and I'll immediately say, well, tell me what you did. They can't. I'm a huge golfer. I love playing golf, and there's no way I play golf without keeping score. You got to you got to have something to measure yourself with. So each day I would see what I would do, how I would do it, and I could use that as a barometer on whether or not I was getting better. Sure. My my junior and senior year um, was as good a teams as you know we had in the valley. I think we finished third both years behind SIU and Creighton, who were you know nationally ranked, you know top 15 every year. Um, everybody knows about the 21 RPI, and then even the following year, I remember our junior year, they asked, you know, we were kind of, we had a lot of questions why we weren't um, getting in that large bid, and I heard we didn't have a huge marquee win. And then our senior year, we go and play Wisconsin in South Padre. I think they were ranked, I uh, was top five at the time. We wound up beating them, and we were their only loss for 20 some odd games. They were number one in the country, and you know, we wound up getting being left out again senior year. So that that's a tough pill to swallow two years in a row. And you know, as much hard work as we put in, dedication and to come up just short was was tough. But I tell people all the time, more than the wins, the records, all that kind of stuff, I take more from the relationships that I have. I still talk to my old SID, I still talk to guys that I play with. Um, and we can pick up the phone or if I see them it's just like we had a day off of practice and we're back in the locker room again. That's, that's stuff that I place way more value on than, than anything on the court. Yeah, Creighton, Creighton and Southern were big, big rivals for us. And I think Southern, in the respect that I played with a lot of guys on the St. Louis Eagles who wound up going there, uh, Jamal Tatum, Randall Falker, uh, there were guys there just you had connections with. So being a competitor, you always you know, want to go after them, you want to beat them. And, and I loved their gym too. It was, a, it was an older gym and I'm an old school guy. So 
you know, going in that older gym, the lighting was kind of, you know, <laughs> iffy and, you know, but it was a great place to play. And then going to Creighton, every time we went there, it was standing room only, 16,000. Quest Center was a, was a great place to play. Uh, my favorite gym to shoot in. Uh, it was just something about that place was, was, was special. So those, those two for me really, really stood out.